Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is a demonstration of Cases, the new case management tool that's built into the Security Onion platform. In my years as a blue teamer, I used many different products for tracking investigations and incident response, and honestly, most of them felt like a help desk ticketing application with some security verbiage tacked on. Cases is designed to be more than that. Rather, it's an integral pivot point within the Security Onion console, which can be used both for keeping records of past investigations and as a launchpad for new ones. First, we'll look at the interface of the CASES tool itself, then walk through a simple alert-driven investigation so you can see how it integrates with the rest of the platform. Let's get started. To begin, log into your Security Onion console, or SOC, using the username and password that you established during installation. To get to the CASES tool, click on the link on the left-hand side of the web browser window. This will take you to the case listing, where by default, you'll see any open cases in your environment. If you click on the query dropdown, you'll see there are predefined queries that will show you cases that are assigned to you, as well as cases that have been closed by yourself or by another analyst. To see the individual case view, let's click on the plus sign to open a new case. At the top of the case screen is the case title. This is the default. If we click on it, we can update it to something more specific to the case. In this case, we'll call it Sample Case Title. This is the short title that appears on that case listing screen. Below that is the case description. This is a larger text field, which is fully markdown compliant for formatting purposes. You can use this to provide a summary of the case, uh, what it's all about, what other things still need to be accomplished, that sort of thing. We'll just call this case description for now. Along the right-hand side of the window, you see there's some summary information about the case as a whole. We have an assignee. In this case, it's unassigned because we just created this case. I'm going to assign it to myself. And we also have a status. The status can be new, meaning the case has been created and nobody has looked at it yet. In progress, meaning it's being actively investigated by one or more analysts. Or closed, meaning the investigation is concluded. By default, that case listing screen will only show things that are new or in progress. Things that are closed need to be retrieved with the proper query. We'll call this in progress. Below that are details about the case. The severity can be set to low, medium, high, or critical, depending on the severity of the possible incident. Below that, we have priority, which is a numerical field. In most environments, the lower the number, the higher the priority, the faster analysts should try to get to this case. But obviously, that's going to be specific to your enterprise and your internal procedures. There is a TLP, a traffic light protocol rating for the case as a whole. That is, how much information about this case are you allowed to share with outside entities or even internal entities within your organization? There's a setting for permissible action protocol, which in some environments governs what sort of reaction you can take during this case, whether you're allowed to do things like submit suspicious files to VirusTotal or lockdown accounts. There's a category field, which allows free text entry. So for example, if we thought this might be a C2 investigation, we can do C2, we'll add that as the category, and then later we can search for all the related cases in the same category. And then tags allow us to add arbitrary tags to the case. So if it was C2, and it was also malware, and it was being investigated in the Columbus Data Center. I might want to add tags for all of those things so that I can retrieve related cases later. At the very bottom, you'll see there's a case ID, which is a long alphanumeric string. It's unique. It can be used to refer to this case. Uh, the author who initially created it, and then the creation and update times for the case as a whole. Moving to the left in the interface, we see that there are five data categories across the top here. The first is comments. Comments are there for analysts or engineers to add comments during the investigation. Much like the case description field, this is also fully markdown compliant. So if you want to add things like uh, bold or italic formatting, if you want to do embedded bulleted lists or checklists to assign work to your analysts, you can do all of that here in the comment field. So this is my first comment. I hit add. You'll see it adds it and it also adds my login name and the time and date that the comment was added. Comments can be edited. They can be trashed if they are no longer needed. 
but that is all recorded in the history tab which we'll see in a moment attachments are for hanging on to artifacts that you discover during an investigation so for example if there's a malicious uh, document that has macros in it or if you need to attach a screenshot to prove that a system was remediated you would do that here under attachments uh, when you add it it stores it in the Elasticsearch backend in your security onion instance. It can later be downloaded. It's also automatically hashed, so you get the hash values for whatever you upload in case you want to use them in VirusTotal or something. Next, we have observables, which are uh, items that you discover, indicators of compromise during an investigation. So things like IP addresses or file hashes or domain names, autonomous system numbers, that sort of thing. Um, when I demonstrate how this works during an investigation, you'll see the utility of observables. But one of the really powerful things is that we've designed cases to allow you to not only store observables, but actually launch a hunt from an observable. So if you discover something like a malicious hash value or an IP address or a DNS name during an investigation, you can put it into your case and then pivot from there into a hunt for that IOC in the rest of your environment. It's a very powerful functionality. Under events, we have all of the events that have been escalated into this case. Uh, we'll talk about that shortly. So if you are doing an investigation and you see something that appears related, that appears uh, interesting, that you want to hang on to for future reference, you can just escalate it into the case. It will copy it into a separate Elasticsearch index that will not be deleted or retired like the rest of your Elasticsearch stuff over time. So we'll preserve it in this case environment. So you've got that evidence going forward. And finally, under history, you can see we have a history of the changes that are made to this case. In this case, all we've done so far is create it. But as we escalate events and add observables and comments and attachments, all of that will fill up in this history tab and we'll get an audit trail of everything that was done with this case from the time it was opened until the time the case was closed. So if your uh, compliance department or your legal people come to you and they want all the details about an investigation, You'll have everything all here in the case record, along with an audit trail of any changes that were made to it. It's a very effective tool. So how does this work in an actual investigation? Well, let's take a look at some alerts and see. So as you can see, we have a few open Suricata alerts in this environment. If we open this one up to take a look at it, we can drill down by clicking on the count. Uh, we'll see that this is a EXE download over HTTP. Uh, and it's coming from this 138.92.1.101 address. That's out on the internet. That's not part of my internal network. So this may be something suspicious. This may need some additional investigation. If we click on that source IP, go to only, it'll show us only the outstanding alerts that are related to this IP. Looking at it, we've got a fair number here. If we sort them by time, we've got uh, what looks like an RDP connection followed by that EXE download. Uh, that exe download, we can see the same timestamp here, actually triggered four different rules. One for an exe over HTTP, one for minimal HTTP headers, which is generally pretty suspicious. It might be a second stage. Uh, one for uh, served attached HTTP, and one for dotted quad host MZ, meaning it was downloaded from a host that only had an IP address, not a host name. So that's suspicious. That generally means that something nefarious is going on. And then shortly after, we have this ARP alert for uh, ARP traffic coming out of our network and being sent to this 1.101 endpoint. So whatever is happening here, it probably merits some further investigation. So let's open up a new case. The easiest way to do that is click on the Escalate button here, and it will say, do you want to escalate this to a new case, which is what we want to do, or do we want to attach the event to a recently viewed case? In this case, the, the sample case that we were looking at with the interface. We want to escalate this to a new case. You see, when we do that, it disappears from our alerts view here, but then it appears in our cases view. So we've got right here a brand new case, and the default case title is the rule name of the alert that we escalated. Let's change that to something a little more uh, human readable here. We'll call it potentially malicious exe download. Uh, we'll leave the description alone for now. I'll assign it to myself. 
and I'll set the status to in progress because I'm going to begin digging in and investigating it now. Now, depending on your internal procedures and workflows, uh, you may have a team of analysts whose job is triaging alerts and creating cases, and then a separate team that changes them from new to in progress and does the actual investigation. Uh, that's up to you. It depends on how your team is oriented. But for this demo, I'm going to start the investigation now, so I'm changing it to in progress. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of categories here. I'm going to add a category for uh, download. And under tags, I'll put uh, exe and download. Again, yeah, what the tags do is they allow us to search for similar cases. Uh, so once we've built up sort of a body of these case records, we can look for relationships between them. If I go over into events here, I'll see here is the alert that I escalated. So let's go back into alerts and escalate those other ones that appear to be related. Uh, these ones were all triggered by the same flow, so we'll put those up there. Oh, sorry, we need to refresh the page to get the uh, context menu showing up properly. So I'll escalate that one, that one, and that one. They've all disappeared from our alerts window, but if I go into case, they're all here in our events. So let's say I want to uh, start harvesting these alerts for observables. I can take the destination IP, click on the little eyeball here, and it will add that to the observables in my case. I go back to events. I can do the same thing for the source IP. Add that as an observable. Okay, and you'll see the observable has the value and the description and so on. If I want to uh, hunt for more information, if I want to look at the exact PCAP here, I can do that pretty easily. Uh, let me just go to the log ID UID. I'll hunt on that. And then now that I'm in the hunt view, I can go to PCAP, retrieve the PCAP for me, and I'll see the packet capture of the download event. In this case, I have a uh, get request for manx.go, uh, the 200 OK coming back from the server. It's returning a file named manx.go-windows. Uh, here's the content length. And we see all the indicators of an EXE being downloaded. We've got the MZ header at the beginning. The This program cannot be run in DOS mode. Uh, so this is definitely an executable being downloaded from this 138.92 address to my internal web server. Uh, if I want, I can click on download the packets as a PCAP and then extract the EXE from them using something like Wireshark or, or Network Miner. Uh, I've actually already done that offline, so let's go back to our case. We'll go to Attachments and we'll add that as an attachment. Got that manx.go-windows.exe. I'll describe it as suspicious exe. We'll leave it on TLP white and I'll hit add. After that's done processing, you'll see I've got a link here in case I need to download it again in the future. I've also got all the hash values for the file because it gets automatically hashed as part of the upload process. So I'll copy that to my clipboard and I'll add that as an observable as well. So now I have all of these observables here. Uh, I have the victim IP address, I have the malicious IP address, I have the hash of the value. Uh, so I should probably start putting some comments in here. So uh, suspicious exe download flagged by Suricata. And I can put a to-do list in here for my team. So first thing we need to do is remove max go dash from endpoint then maybe block malicious IP and then uh, write a detection for the hash add that because it's in Markdown, 
uh, those brackets get turned into little checkboxes. So the rest of my team can go in and check those off or add comments indicating that they've done them. And I can track the workflow through the remediation of this EXE. If I want to do more investigation into what the EXE is actually doing, a good place to start with that would be do a hunt. We can hunt for the actual executable name. And we'll see we've got some process creation events from Sysmon, also some file creations and network connections. Uh, one good way to dig in on this would be, uh, we'll isolate, we'll say just the process creation events. We want uh, just the process parent executable manx.go-windows. So it'll show us that. And then we can group it by the process execution. Uh, process command line. So if we group by that, we'll see all of the various uh, processes that were kicked off by this Manx item. And if we want to save those, we can escalate them into our case as well. So we'll escalate those up. Then we go back to our case to review it. We'll see in addition to all that Suricata stuff, we also have some good uh, Sysmon data. Now we can turn around and use that to, to build more detections or to otherwise enrich our defenses. So when we see this again, we recognize it, we're able to block it. Once uh, the remediation is complete, once you have concluded your investigation, then you can go into status here, closed. The case will disappear from the active case queue, so your analyst will no longer work it. But all of this information will be preserved so that you can use it going forward if you need to hunt for these threats again. For example, if you want to look for this hash in your environment, you can just go back to observables, click the hunt icon next to the hash, It'll open a fresh hunt window just for that hash and show you if it's anywhere else in your environment, if this implant was written to disk or executed anywhere else. So to summarize, Cases is a new case management feature in the Security Onion platform that not only allows your analysts to uh, track and record their investigation, but also amass an inventory of indicators of compromise that can be used as seeds for further hunts in the future. Uh, we think it's a real step forward in how incident tracking can be done, and we hope you agree. If you have questions, there's more documentation on the Cases module available on our Docs page, securityonion.net slash docs. If you're interested in any of our training offerings where we get more in-depth in the platform on topics like this, there's information available at securityonion.net slash training. And if you have questions about Cases or if you're having issues getting it to work properly in your environment, please feel free to reach out and start a new thread at securityonion.net slash discuss. That's our community discussion board. Thanks a lot. I hope this video was helpful. Have a great day.